welcome to edupediaworld.com this is somja jay nayar your online biology tutor the chapter is biotechnology principles and processes in this chapter we are going to discuss about different principles and different processes and different tools which is using in the field of biotechnology what is biotechnology biotechnology deals with techniques of using living organisms or enzymes from organisms to produce product and processes useful to human in this sense making curd bread or wine which or all microbe mediated processes could also be thought as a form of biotechnology however it is used in a restricted sense today to refer to such of those processes which use genetically modified organisms to achieve the same on a large scale further many other processes or techniques are also included under biotechnology for example in vitro fertilization leading to a test tube baby synthesizing a gene and using it developing a dna vaccine or correcting a defective gene are all part of biotechnology the european federation of biotechnology or efp has given a definition of biotechnology that encompasses both traditional view and modern molecular biotechnology the definition given by efp is as follows the integration of natural science and organisms cells parts thereof and molecular analogs for products and services principles of biotechnology among many the two core techniques that enable birth of modern biotechnology are first one genetic engineering the techniques to alter the chemistry of genetic material dna and rna to introduce these into host organisms and thus change the phenotype of the host organism second one maintenance of sterile microbial contamination free ambience in chemical engineering processes to enable growth of only the desired microbe or eukaryotic cell in large quantities for the manufacture of biotechnological products like antibiotics vaccines enzymes etc before going into details we will discuss some important aspects which will help to understand the chapter well advantages of sexual reproduction over asexual reproduction sexual reproduction provides opportunities for variations and formulations of unique combinations of genetic setup some of which may be beneficial to the organism as well as the population a sexual reproduction it preserve the genetic information while sexual reproduction permit variations traditional hybridization versus genetic engineering traditional hybridization procedures used in plants and animal breeding are very often lead to inclusion and multiplication of undesirable genes along with the desired genes the technique of genetic engineering which include creation of recombinant dna use of gene cloning and gene transfer overcome this limitation and allow us to isolate and introduce only one or a set of desirable gene without introducing undesirable genes into the target organism do you know the likely fate of a piece of dna which is somehow transferred into an alien organism most likely this piece of dna would not be able to multiply itself in the progeny cells of the organism but when it gets integrated into the genome of the recipient it may multiply and be inherited along with the host dna this is because the alien piece of dna has become part of a chromosome which has the ability to replicate in a chromosome there is a specific dna sequence called the origin of replication which is responsible for initiating the replication therefore the multiplication of any alien piece of dna in an organism it needs to be a part of chromosome which has a specific sequence known as origin of replication thus an alien dna is linked with the origin of replication so that this alien piece of dna can replicate and multiply itself in the host organism this can also be called cloning or making multiple identical copies of any 
template DNA. Construction of an artificial recombinant DNA molecule. The construction of the first decombinant DNA emerged from the possibility of linking a gene encoding antibiotic resistant with a native plasmid that is autonomously replicating circular extra chromosomal DNA of Salmonella typhimuria. Stanley Cohn and Herbert Boyer accomplished this in 1972 by isolating the antibiotic resistant gene by cutting out a piece of DNA from a plasmid which was responsible for conferring antibiotic resistant. The cutting of DNA at specific location became possible with the discovery of so-called molecular scissors or restriction enzymes. The cut piece of DNA was then linked with the plasmid DNA. These plasmid DNA act as vectors to transfer the piece of DNA attached to it. The linking of antibiotic resistant gene with plasmid vector become possible with the enzyme DNA ligase which acts on the cut DNA molecule and join their end. This makes a new combination of circular autonomously replicating DNA created in vitro and is known as recombinant DNA. When these transferred into E. coli, a bacterium closely related to Salmonella, it could replicate using the new host DNA polymerase enzyme and make multiple copies. The ability to multiply copies of antibiotic resistant gene in E. coli was called cloning of antibiotic resistant gene in E. coli. The three basic steps in genetically modify an organism. Identification of DNA with desirable genes. Introduction of the identified DNA into the host, maintenance of introduced DNA in the host and transfer of the DNA to its progeny. Tools of recombinant DNA technology. Now we know from the foregoing discussion that genetic engineering or recombinant DNA technology can be accomplished only if we have the key tools that is the restriction enzymes, polymerase enzyme, ligases, vectors and the host organism. Let us discuss about all of them. Restriction enzymes. Restriction enzyme also known as restriction endonucleases are enzymes that cut a DNA molecule or cleave the sugar phosphate backbone of the DNA at a particular place. The enzyme scans a DNA molecule looking for a particular sequence usually of four to six nucleotides. Once it finds these recognition sequences it stops and cuts the strand. This is known as the enzyme digestion. This allows the enzyme to cut both the strands. Sometimes the cut is blunt, sometimes the cut is uneven with dangling nucleotides on one of the two strands. This uneven cut is known as sticky ends. Here you can see the diagrammatic representation of blunt end and sticky end. Naming of restriction enzyme. The convention for naming these enzymes is the first letter of the name come from the genes and the second two letters come from the species of the prokaryotic cell from which they isolated. Example, ECO R1 comes from E. coli RY13. In ECO R1, the letter R is derived from the name of the strain. Roman numbers following the names indicate the order in which the enzymes are isolated from the strain of bacteria. Types of nucleases. Restriction enzymes belong to a large class of enzymes called nucleases. These are of two kinds exonucleases and endonucleases. Exonucleases remove nucleotides from the ends of the DNA, whereas endonucleases make cuts at specific position within the DNA. How restriction endonucleases functions? Each restriction endonuclease functions by inspecting the length of the DNA sequence. Once it finds its specific recognition sequence, it will bind to the DNA and cut each of the two strands of the double helix at specific point in the sugar phosphate backbones. Each restriction endonuclease recognizes specific palindromic nucleotide sequences in the DNA. Do you know what is palindromes? These are group of letters that form the same words when read both forward and backward. Example, like in Malayalam, M-A-L-A-Y-A-L-A-M. 
if you read from starting it will read malayalam if you read from the back it is then also it read as malayalam as against a word palindrome where the same word is read in both directions the palindrome in dna is a sequence of base pairs that read same on the two strands when orientation of reading is kept the same for example the following sequences read the same on the two strands that 5 dash to 3 dash direction and 3 dash to 5 dash direction it reads same restriction enzymes cut the strands of dna a little away from the center of palindrome sites but between the same two bases on the opposite strand this leave single stranded portion at the ends there are overhanging stretches called sticky ends on each strand these are named so because they form hydrogen bond with their complementary cut counterparts this stickiness of the end facilitate the action of enzyme dna ligers restriction endonucleases are used in genetic engineering to form recombinant molecules of dna which are composed of dna from different sources or genomes when cut by the same restriction enzyme the resultant dna fragment have same kind of sticky ends and this can be joined together using dna ligases this is the diagrammatic representation of recombinant dna technology here you can see a foreign dna and a vector dna or plasmid same restriction enzyme cut both foreign and vector dna at specific point and ligase join this foreign dna to the plasmid then we transform it into the e coli bacteria and the cell divide along with that the vector and the foreign dna also divides separation and isolation of dna fragments the cutting of dna by restriction endonucleases result in the fragments of dna these fragments can be separated by a technique known as gel electrophoresis since dna fragments are negatively charged molecule they can be separated by forcing them to move towards the anode under an electric field through a medium or matrix nowadays the most commonly used matrix is agarose which is a natural polymer extracted from seaweeds the dna fragment separate or resolve according to their size through sieving effect provided by the agarose gel hence the smaller the fragment size the farther it moves the separated dna fragment can be visualized only after staining the dna with a compound known as ethidium bromide followed by exposure to the uv radiation you cannot see pure dna fragment in the visible light and without staining you can see bright orange colored bands of dna in an ethidium bromide stained gels which is exposed to uv light the separated bands of dna are cut out from the agarose gel and extracted from the gel piece this step is known as elution the dna fragment purified in this way are used in constructing recombinant dna by joining them with cloning vector this is a diagrammatic representation of an agarose gel electrophoresis here you can see a typical agarose gel electrophoresis showing migration of undigested that is in the lane 1 and digested set of dna fragment that is from lane 2 to 4 cloning vectors a dna molecule that carries foreign dna into a host cell replicates inside a bacterial or yeast cell and produces many copies of itself and the foreign dna the insertion of fragment into the cloning vector is carried out by treating the vehicle and foreign dna with a restriction enzyme that creates the same overhang then ligating the fragments together there are many types of cloning vectors genetically engineered plasmids and bacteriophages such as phage lambda are perhaps most commonly used for this purposes other types of cloning vectors include bacterial artificial chromosomes or BAC and yeast artificial chromosome or YACs. Types of cloning vector. First one, plasmid. An extra chromosomal circular DNA molecule that autonomously replicate inside the bacterial cell. The cloning limit is 100 to 10,000 base pairs or 0 0.1 to 10 kilo bases. KB. Phage. Derivatives of bacteriophage lambda, linear DNA molecule whose regions can be replaced with the foreign DNA 
without disturbing the its life cycle the cloning limit is 8 to 20 kb cosmids are extra chromosomal circular dna molecules that combine features of plasmids and phages the cloning limit is 35 to 50 kb bacterial artificial chromosomes or bac based on bacterial mini f plasmids the cloning limit is 73 to 300 kilo bases yeast artificial chromosomes or yak are artificial chromosomes that contain telomeres origin of replication a yeast centromere and a selectable marker for identification in yeast cells the cloning limit is 100 to 1000 kb features that are required to facilitate the cloning into a vector first one origin of replication or ori this is sequence from where replication starts and any piece of dna when linked to this sequence can be made to replicate within the host cells this sequence is also responsible for controlling the copy number of the linked dna so if one wants to recover many copies of the target dna it should be cloned in a vector whose origin of support which have high copy number selectable marker in addition to ori the vector requires a selectable marker which help in identifying and eliminating non transformants and selectively permitting the growth of transformants transformation is a procedure through which a piece of dna is introduced in a host bacterium you will study the process in subsequent sessions normally the gene encoding resistant to antibiotics such as ampicillin chloramphenicol tetracycline or canamycin etc are considered useful selectable markers for e coli the normal e coli cell do not carry resistance against any of these antibiotics cloning sites in order to link the alien dna the vector needs to have very few preferably single recognition sites for the commonly used restriction enzymes presence of more than one recognition site within the vector will generate several fragments which will complicate the gene cloning vectors for cloning genes in plants and animals once a gene for a dna fragment has been ligated into a suitable vector it is transferred into a bacterial plant or animal hosts where it multiplies this is a diagrammatic representation of the e coli cloning vector pbr322 e coli cloning vector pbr322 showing restriction sites hin3 eco r1 bam h1 sal1 pvu2 ps2 1 cla1 and a origin of replication and antibiotic resistant genes like ampicillin resistant genes and tetracycline resistant genes probe codes for the protein involved in the replication of the plasmid how antibiotic resistant gene in the plasmid help cloning the cloning vectors will have more than one antibiotic resistant genes like ampicillin resistant genes and tetracycline resistant gene together the ligation of alien dna is carried out at a restriction site present in one of the two antibiotic resistant gene for example you can ligate a foreign dna at the bam h1 site of the tetracycline resistant gene in the vector pbr322 the recombinant plasmid will lose tetracycline resistance due to the insertion of foreign dna but can still be selected out from non recombinant ones by plating the transformants on ampicillin containing medium the transformants growing on ampicillin containing medium are then transferred on a medium containing tetracycline the recombinants will grow in ampicillin contain medium but not on that of containing tetracycline but the non recombinants will grow on the medium containing both the antibiotics in this case one antibiotic resistant gene help in selecting the transformants whereas the other antibiotic resistant gene gets inactivated due to insertion of the alien dna and this help in the selection of the recombinants this is the diagrammatic representation of the inner insertional inactivation here you can see the selection of recombinants first one the non transformed cannot grow in ampicillin or tetracycline medium transformed ones only transformed colonies can grow in ampicillin or tetracycline containing medium a yeah. transformed with the non recombinant or unaltered vector can grow in both ampicillin and tetracycline contain medium transformed with the recombinant vector that can carrying our gene of interest the transformed recombinants can grow only in ampicillin medium and cannot grow in tetracycline medium due to insertional inactivation 
so recombinant colonies can be easily selected from the master plate uh, insertional inactivation by laxi gene selection of recombinant dna due to inactivation of antibiotics is a cumbersome process because it requires simultaneous plating on two plates having different antibiotic therefore alternative selectable markers have been developed which differentiate recombinant from non recombinants on the basis of the ability to produce color in the presence of chromogenic substrate in this a recombinant dna is inserted within the coding sequence of an enzyme beta galactosidase which is coding for the laxi gene this result into inactivation of the enzyme which is referred to as an insertional inactivation the presence of a chromogenic substrate gives blue colored colonies if the plasmid in the bacterium does not have an insert presence of insert result in insertional inactivation of beta galact and the colonies do not produce any color these are identified as recombinant colonies this is a diagrammatic representation of in insertional inactivation by laxi gene first plasmid dna and foreign dna are both cut with the same restriction enzyme and the plasmid has the gene for lactose hydrolysis that is the laxi gene that encode for the enzyme beta galactosidase and ampicillin resistance then foreign dna will insert into laxi gene the bacterium receiving the plasmid vector will not produce the enzyme beta galactosidase if foreign dna has been inserted into the plasmid then the recombinant plasmid is introduced into the bacterium which become ampicillin resistance all treated bacteria are spread on a nutrient agar plate containing ampicillin and beta galactosidase substrate and incubated the beta galactosidase substrate is called excal only bacteria that picked up the plasmid will grow in the presence of ampicillin bacteria that hydrolyzes excal produce galactose and an indigo compound the indigo turns the colonies into blue color bacteria that cannot hydrolyze excal produce white colonies thank you this i am winding up this video in the next video we will be discussing about the other principal processes and other important tools which is used in the field of biotechnology